Laws of logarithms? What's with math and laws? Why does everyone have to be so judicial with everything? The logarithmic laws are very similar to the exponent laws, which you're likely familiar with if you're watching this video. Just like with exponent laws, log laws only work when the bases are the same. So I can say the log of base b of m plus the log of base b of n is equal to log base b of the product of m and n. I can say the subtraction of two logarithms with the same base results in the log of the division of the two things I'm taking the log of. So both of these log laws are very similar to their exponent law counterparts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply these logarithm laws to a few examples. So writing as a single logarithm means condense the problem into the log of something, not a sum or difference of multiple logs like we have here. Now I'm going to keep our new logarithm laws handy as we're going to refer to these throughout this solution. Now the first thing I notice here is that I'm adding three logarithms of the same base. Each of these represents a common logarithm with a base of 10, which is why you don't see the 10 written. I'm also subtracting the logarithm of base 10. Because all of my bases are the same, I can apply our new log laws. Remember for addition of logarithms of the same base, I can multiply the stuff I'm taking the log of, resulting in 3x times x to get x squared times y. And because I'm subtracting here, I can divide by y and write this as a single logarithm of base 10. Hopefully you can see that I've just applied both of these log laws in one step to simplify this expression into a single logarithm. You'll notice that I have a y on top and a y on the bottom, so those two can cancel out to leave me with the log of 3x squared. You probably saw it coming that those y's were going to cancel because we had log y minus log y in our original expression. However, I wanted to keep those to show you an application of the second log law. Let's look at another example. I want to write this expression as a single simplified logarithm. It should be pretty obvious that I'm going to be applying the subtraction division law of logarithms because you can see here that I have division inside of a logarithm. So anytime you have a radical expression, I find it's always a good idea to write these using rational exponents. Next, I'm going to apply my new log law to say, well, if I have division inside a logarithm, that's the same as subtracting the log of the thing on top minus the log of the thing on the bottom. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, you know that if you're taking the log of something with an exponent, you can bring the exponent down in front of the logarithm. So I've done that for both of these exponents. I now have a situation where I can really just collect like terms. I have half of a log of x minus 2 log x, resulting in negative 3 over 2 log x. Now, if you're keen, you probably see that I could have produced this solution from the second step by just subtracting my exponents and bringing that exponent down in front of the logarithm. But again, I wanted to show you how you can use this law in practice. Now I want to walk you through one more sort of complex example that involves some previous understandings like factoring. You can see here that I'm subtracting two logarithmic expressions with the same base, which should make you think about the second law for logarithms. I can rewrite this as a single logarithm by taking the first thing and dividing by the second thing inside a logarithm. Now here's where you need to think back to your understanding of factoring. On the bottom, it should be clear that you have a difference of squares. On the top, there appears to be a common factor of two. Applying both of these factoring strategies results in this expression. I have an x minus 1 on top and on the bottom, which allows me to cancel those two and simplify into the log of 2 over x plus 1. So that's kind of a neat example that combines your understanding of factoring with the laws of logarithms. So at this point, maybe you're thinking, so why are these log laws useful? I've linked a video here that will show you how to solve logarithmic equations. You 100% cannot solve these problems without an understanding of the logarithmic laws covered in this video. 